Hello everyone and welcome back to Ponderosa North for the love of Bonanza. Well, it's story time, my friends. Go get yourself a cup of coffee or a hot chocolate or a cup of tea. Put me on pause for a minute. I'll wait. Okay, um, this is a story I wrote a couple of years ago. It kind of explores the relationship between uh, little Joe and Adam. Um, I'm going to uh, tell it to you in two parts because it's a little long. I, ho I hope you enjoy it. Um, I do love writing um, all kinds of things um, and especially um, Cartwright episodes. I try to make them as true to the characters as possible, as true to the um, episode structure as possible. I try to write it as an actual uh, Bonanza episode. So here we go. Here's part one of the story I wrote. It's called His Mother's Son. Little Joe Cartwright lounged on his bedroll. He propped his saddle against a rock and used it as a cushion. He sopped up what was left of his stew and his last bite of cornbread and popped it into his mouth. He sighed with satisfaction. Tossing his tin plate to the side, he stretched and placed his hands behind his head as he exhaled a long, indulgent sigh. Older brother, he said, you sure know how to make a great rabbit stew. Well, thank you, Adam replied as he sucked on a toothpick. Cooking isn't exactly my forte, but I do my best. Joseph was 20 years old. He and his brother Adam, 12 years his senior, were traveling back to their ranch from buying breeding cattle in Yuma, Arizona. Uh, usually it was the middle son, Haas, who accompanied either brother, but just before the trip, he separated his shoulder, breaking an extremely cantankerous bronc. So Adam stepped in to make the trek instead. Haas and Joe were a better match. They had a great deal in common and were closer in age. The youngest sons of Ben Cartwright shared great camaraderie and a wonderful sense of fun. They often found trouble and were notoriously rambunctious. Their devotion to one another was blatantly obvious. Joe and Adam, on the other hand, rarely traveled together. Yes, they loved each other dearly, but they didn't necessarily like each other. If they hadn't been half-brothers, they probably wouldn't have been friends. To Adam, Joe was just an impetuous kid who needed constant discipline. Adam felt he was incurably immature, incorrigible. To Joe, his eldest brother was simply another parent. Adam was overly serious and authoritative, and Joe always felt intimidated by Adam's intellect. The pair were like chalk and cheese. But the auction in Yuma could not go unattended, so Adam and Joe were it. Of course, they made the best of it and enjoyed each other's company. They were usually congenial until the inevitable but inevitably butted heads. Either Joe's sensitivity or Adam's stubbornness could ignite the smallest spark, leaving the pair upset. The easiness that was always present in Haas's company was missing. Both men felt it. They always had. Their personality conflict was so old, it now seemed normal. They were comfortable with being uncomfortable with one another. Did you have enough to eat, Joe? Adam asked as he too sprawled on his ground sheet fighting fatigue. Yeah, thanks, Joe answered as he glanced across the campfire at his brother. Adam's face was illuminated by the flames, making his complexion look like butter. His eyes were lazily half open. Tired, Joe asked, little Joe asked after he'd stifled a yawn. Very, Adam smirked. I'll be glad to spend some time sitting in a chair rather than in a saddle. My saddle sores have saddle sores. Adam's painful comment made Joe chuckle as only little Joe could, like a chipmunk. But he couldn't agree more with Adam's assessment. He shifted slightly to place his derriere in just the right position to avoid said tender spots. The men settled into contented silence. Twilight had melted into the night over the dry flatlands of lower Nevada. The soft mauve of dusk was now a deep indigo and the sky looked like black, like blue velvet. Its texture was irresistible. Stars that an hour earlier were as faint as dapples on a pony had blossomed into a bouquet of what looked like a million diamonds. Hey Adam, Joe murmured over the cry of crickets and the haunting howl of distant coyotes. Yeah, where'd you learn to cook that stew anyway? Joe asked from beneath the brim of his tipped hat. He put his hand over his abdomen with gratification. Adam sat with his knee bent up against his chest. He leaned his forearm casually over it, his empty coffee cup dangling loosely from the end of his forefinger. 
He pulled the toothpick from his lips and let his head bob forward as if it was too heavy to hold up any longer. He chuckled softly and shook his head. What? Joe inquired quizzically, wondering what Adam found so amusing. Your mother taught me how to cook that stew, Joe. She did? Yeah, she did, Adam confirmed warmly. Joe's curiosity was piqued, and he sat up and turned to face his brother. He crossed his legs and picked up a twig to play with. Hey, Adam? Yeah. How come you never talk about her? Who? My mother. What do you mean we talk about her all the time? Well, Pa talks about her, but you never do. How come? Well, I don't know, Joe. I guess I'm, well, I guess I find it hard to. Why? Well, because I, because why? Joe probed vehemently. Joe, Adam said firmly, trying to halt the conversation before it escalated into an argument. He rarely let his guard down about his inner thoughts, and he wasn't about to start. Oh, come on, Adam. I don't think I've ever heard you tell a story or mention any time with her, little Joe paused. You don't even like her, do you? Well, what kind of talk is that? Adam sounded annoyed. That's why, isn't it, Adam? You didn't like her because she was born in the South. You never liked her because of her past. That's not true, Adam blasted. I never felt anything of the kind. Why do you insist on turning everything into a drama, Joe? Not everything is a drama. Some things are private, that's all. You don't have to know everything, Adam expounded with ire. Tell me, Adam, Joe insisted. You hated her, didn't you? His tone was razor sharp. Now that's enough, Adam required. Why do you refuse to talk about my mother? Little Joe pressed, breaking the twig into pieces. I have my reasons. Well, what are they? I deserve to know. You don't deserve anything. You hated her. Why, Adam, why? Adam slowly sat up and placed his coffee cup on his plate. He could feel Joe's glare burning like a branding iron into his skin. Taking a deep breath to calm himself, Adam leaned back onto his side and faced his brother. Look, Joe, he said evenly, I loved your mother. I loved her very much, and I don't appreciate being accused of hatred toward anyone, especially Pa's wife. Little Joe's posture stagged. He sheepishly continued to play with the twigs, kneading them, kneading them humbly. He stared down at them, ashamed to make eye contact. I'm sorry, Joe sniffed. Well, apology accepted. Now let's get some sleep, can we? Joe seemed satisfied with that for the moment, and he lay back onto his saddle. It creaked as he adjusted himself into a comfortable position. He stared into the heavens and couldn't help thinking about his mother. He could barely remember her. It wasn't, if it wasn't for the picture of her that sat at his bedside, he'd have, a str have to struggle to remember what she even looked like. Of the three boys, Adam knew her best. He had the most vivid memories of Marie. Joe thought a moment longer, debating whether he should force the issue with Adam. Since he, the subject still lingered in the air like smoke, he decided that, not, that now might be his only and one and only chance to pump Adam for more information. He decided to take the opportunity, and again, he sat upright. So that's part one. I hope you're enjoying it. So stay tuned, and I hope you come back to hear the conclusion of His Mother's Son. Bye for now.